I have no prepared address for you tonight, today. But this is an occasion that I was asked to be present two years ago by Adele Chatfield Taylor. I couldn't resist it for reasons you will soon know. The first time I was acquainted with Thomas Jefferson was when I was in school studying architecture. And of course, Monticello was everywhere. And yet, Jefferson was not an architect. And that amazed me. So I can't claim to know too much about Jefferson because there's so many Jefferson scholars here today. But I can tell you that back in 1930s, or late 30s, I read a book, I don't find it anymore, describing Jefferson's travels in France. There, he studied not just architecture, which he knew better than all of us, but he also was interested in food and wine. Ah, here's a man of culture. <laughs> Ever since then, he's been a, on my heart. I say, here's a man any one of us, especially architects, would like to emulate. So I do have a connection with this great man. And the, that connection started late, perhaps, because I came to America 71 years ago. I want to tell you something about that experience of mine, because I think it may be appropriate for some of you I hear there are 75 of you here t today. I left Shanghai in 1935 on a boat called President Coolidge. It took us 18 days to cross the Pacific. But the last day, I didn't sleep. I was on deck watching, watching for San Francisco Bay. And when it appeared, it's a moment, I tell you, I have never experienced again. A moment of great joy, expectation, excitement. I was alone in some ways because my family was not with me. But I felt very much part of something already. Now, the name of the island, if I remember correctly, is called Angel's Island, where I landed. Not Ellis Island, that many of you probably came. But it could have been Devil's Island, and it, my reaction would have been the same. That sense of joy is unbelievable and difficult to describe. Now, since then, I was very lucky. Because in those days, to be an American citizen was very, very difficult, much more difficult than today, I think. <laughs> and we labor here, my wife and I, labor through the war, because there was a war going on, and I couldn't ret return to my native country because there too, there too was a war going on. So not until 1954 I was received. My application was accepted. And there were five thousands of us, not 75, in polo grounds in New York. Now, speeches longer than this, And after the, take, having taken the oath of application of citizenship, and then pledged the allegiance to the flag, and we sang the national anthem. At the end of that, believe it or not, there were several minutes of silence, absolute silence. 
none of us expected that because that was a moment of great emotion for all. Applause came after that. It was thundering because Polo Grounds was a big place and there were many of us and many of them were refugees from Europe. Now that experience does compare, I think, in some ways with yours. Time has changed. The place, however, is different. My experience is in Polo Grounds, and it's an arena, big, big place. Yours is here. I think the hallow grounds of Thomas Jefferson. How lucky are you? So not only can you think of your individual experience to compare with mine, but you also will not forget that you receive your citizenship here at Monticello. Before Jefferson took office, 1800 or 1801, he was not entirely in favor of immigration because the country was small then. To absorb a wave of people coming from different culture, different forms of government might disrupt this nation. Very, very thoughtful idea. But soon afterwards, after he retired from presidency, in fact, even during presidency, he asserted the rights of citizenship in 1801 as a law of nature, as he called it. Then I remember in 1806, he thought, and he wrote, I think, about the, that expatriation, which means immigration, I guess, is also a natural thing to happen in that world at that time, very early, 200 years ago. And in 1821, in his autobiography, he reasserted again and again the right of expatriation. So therefore, you have that to remember, the man, as well as your own history. I feel very, very proud today to be here for the same reason I just mentioned to you, because I'm also with you at Monticello. Thank you very much. <laughs>